What does F1 racing have to do with gravel tires? Well, in a word, Pirelli. Pirelli is the sole distributor of all race tires for all the F1 teams. And they happen to make some high-end road and gravel tires. I'm here in Austin, Circuit of the Americas, getting the chance to meet some of the folks with Pirelli, getting a chance to take a lap with a certain Mr. Valtteri Botas and talk to some folks about what goes into rubber, natural rubber, synthetic rubber. Pirelli is making a big push for sustainability, being certified by the FSC. Come along for the ride on Pirelli in Austin. Wait, about to, how often do you have a bike with you when you're racing on the F1 track? Uh, on the most road? races, most races. Obviously, within Europe, it's easier because I stay in a motorhome, so it stays in, in the motorhome. But uh, flyaways, yeah, everything pretty much except Mexico and Brazil, I'll have my bike. Uh -huh. And you ride on the track because you want to see the track, or because that's a safer way to do it? It's easier. Why? Why on the track versus just taking a ride around oh, the neighborhood? Actually, I, I normally want to see the track before I get there with the car uh, because year, year to year, normally there is some changes, whether it's the curbs, whether it's some bumps developing or uh, new bits of tarmac, stuff like that. So I look out for those things on, on Thursday. And uh, then also it's safer, like in many locations where the track is, maybe the riding is not great, but it's always guaranteed that I can get my an hour a day on, on, on the track. Sure, sure. This is your second ride of the day. You're, you're, you're business casual in the in the tennis shoes and hats. Uh, what was your ride this morning? I uh, had a ride this morning for one and a half hours with uh, Mr. Lance and uh, Jan. They've made me some, some you know, those guys. So yes. uh, they, they showed me a local look, which is cool. Are tires more important in F1 or in cycling? Both. Yeah. Obviously, in the end is still the only contact point to the ground that provides you uh, grip. Same thing in the low pits and uh, yeah, with the uh, electric car, we have four. No more specs in dry, but uh, yeah, I, I ride more often now gravel bikes than road bikes because I, I feel like it's been more fun. And, sure. Uh, it opens up another uh, world of riding. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely into tires and, um, and the technology of the nowadays. Thanks very much for your time. How similar are F1, the rubber used in F1 tires to a top-end bicycle tire? Materials in some cases are the same, in some other are different. Obviously, it depends the quantity, the percentage, and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I think that uh, Formula One is extremely important on developing, testing new technologies and also new materials, and then a second step can be used as well on a daily use, on racing, on cycling, or also on the daily mm -hmm. uh, activity. So Formula One is our laboratory, also to develop and find new ways in order to find new materials, testing them, and then uh, putting on the normal collection. Sure, now forgive my ignorance, I know cycling, I don't know anything about car racing. There are, are there three main types of tires that are provided to the F1 teams, is that correct? There are different types depending on the circuit. There are the soft, the hard, there's the tire that is for the, the wet. So we have different compounds and different uh, uh, type of tires that we bring to each different uh, race uh, is depend on the type of the asphalt, for example, mm -hmm. or the temperature that we will find there. So we define a few weeks in advance what will be the best set of tires, the best type of tires that we we'll bring for everybody the same, and then the team can choose which one on the set they can uh, they can use. What's wrong with having synthetic rubber? Why why is it important to, to use natural rubber? No, that's not wrong with synthetic rubber. They play a different role. We have you need to use natural rubber and synthetic rubber together. The important is that when you use something that is natural, the entire flow is certified. So you protect the forest, you protect the way how you collect this natural rubber, and then you apply this on, our, on the tires. This is why we are uh, working with the FSC and we our ties in Formula One and some of the car ties and the cycling ties are FSC certificate. But synthetic rubber is very good. It's just a matter of balancing the performances. Something that you can have with natural rubber, you cannot have with uh, the synthetic rubber. So our ties or no ties are made just only with natural rubber or only synthetic rubber. Which is which? This is a soft one, the red one. So yes. So you define the color as well. Yep. And you see that it is the logo. So this is really the softer one. Then we have the medium one that is uh, a little bit in between and the, the hard. These are the three ones that are used for uh, dry situation. And then we have two options 
for wet. So we have the intermediate, the green one, and the blue one for the high, for the wet well being. There's a lot of water in the city. So the intermediate tyres can pick up 35 to 40 litres of water a second at 100 kph, and the wet tyres are up to 85 litres of water a second. But if you're running them in the dry, they last only? Only about two laps. So once that water is picked up from track, you want to switch, switch the soft to the pretty quickly. And then how many laps do the soft, medium and hard tires last? It really de depends on the track, because sure. obviously, and um, depending on Monaco compared to Silverstone, it's very, very different tracks. So usually the soft would be about 20 laps, then 30 and 40. Right. But every track you have to at least do one pit stop. And then these uh, tyres as well are the rear tyres, they're 40.5 centimetres in width, the fronts are 30.5 centimetres, so this makes the rear tyres about 23.5 kilograms, uh, including the rims, whereas the fronts are about 21.5 kilograms. But these ones will be a little bit heavier because they're the show tyres, so they're not using the same metals as the team would use. So FSC is the Forest Stewardship Council. And what we do is we're the leader in sustainable forestry worldwide. We do that through our certification of forestry companies, and then we also certify supply chain companies. And then we also work with brands and retailers that eventually sell products with the FSC logo into the marketplace. So when you see these logos here mm -hmm. <laughs> on products, you know that it's coming from a sustainably managed forest. So we need more companies like Pirelli making those commitments in order to actually have more certified forests around the world. Right now, I mentioned earlier today in the presentation that we only have 150 million hectares, which is actually quite a bit. How many hectares are there in the world? Oh, I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you a Canadian number, but okay. in Canada, there's 347 million hectares of forest and landscape that is available in the country. Okay. In Canada, for example, we have 46 million of that 300 that is FSC certified. Okay. So we still have a while to go before we can get everything certified. Yeah. Same thing with rubber. We don't have every single rubber plantation in the world that is certified. We'd love to get there so that we can say that all rubber plantations are sustainable, mm -hmm. but we're not there yet. All right, Sam, Yeah. Thanks for the ride today. That was good. Yeah, that was a good one. I want to talk about three things. The connection between F1 and cycling tires. Your thoughts on gravel trends. How construction affects feel. Like tire compound and casings and what separates a high-end tire from an entry-level tire. So those are three things I'll hit you up with. So yeah. F1, if you're into, if you're an F1 fan, it's cool to see Pirelli on the cars and on tires. For people like myself who don't know much about F1, what is the connection between the tires that go on these 200 mile an hour race cars and gravel bikes and road bikes? Yeah, the, uh, there are, I would say, not not in general, but in the case uh, of us, uh, materials and R&D, they are totally shared. This is uh, uh, not a general answer. It's, it's down to how we are organized uh, as a company because we have uh, basically a breakdown on all the areas of development of the, of the tires. Mm -hmm. For example, we have the compounding department, the textile uh, materials, uh, testing and equipment, uh, chemical laboratories. So all of those in Pirelli, they are set up as a single departments, which works for all the business divisions. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, this means that you have physically the same people which develops the rubber compound formulation for uh, Formula One, passenger car tires, motor tires, cycling tires. So. Today they do a new formulation for the next generation of Formula One. Tomorrow they have the task to do the cycling compound. The day after they do the one of normal uh, car tires. And this goes on for all the uh, other parts of the, of the tire. So this means that you have the know-how of the people who really physically work in the laboratories, completely shared. And you share uh, the development uh, processes and the machines, mm -hmm. as well as the materials, which is probably the area where there is more in common between the two. And yeah. here I have a funny, I mean funny, uh, one thing which nobody knows or nobody thinks about, but uh, cycling tires and F1 tires, they are uh, the two closest one in terms of construction okay. than all the other uh, typology of, uh, of tires. For a single reason that uh, there is no metal inserts inside the Formula 1 tires, mm -hmm. as well there is not in the, in the cycling tires. So a typical what? car tire, like we're right next All to a freeway, tire, you can yeah. hear some of these cars driving by. The yeah. 
the tires on your cars at home they have metal, metal casing. Yeah. They have metal casings yeah. uh, together with some nylon and some Kevlar, but there is... Makes it, for the reason it makes it stronger, Yes, but exactly. it makes it heavier, so that's not a high performance thing. Exactly, exactly. You got you got the point. Yeah. Uh, I would say that when you go off-road on vehicles, even high performance, there, so rally car tires or motocross, mm. they are high performance and they have metal uh, texture layers uh, into it. So, uh, But uh, in Formula 1 and cycling only, you don't have any. Mm -hmm. if, with the only exception of the, the bead, mm -hmm. the, the, the tire bead for F1 is uh, steel, uh, as it can be for mountain bike down mm -hmm. in terms But on casing construction, you only have nylon folded. How about different grade of nylon, so then it gets complicated, but sure. uh, that's a similarity between the two, which to me is uh, strange, yeah. because you don't. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't think, you, know, you will ever think that uh, they are similar, but they are in fact. How about the rubber compounds? Like you look at the tires, got a cat coming yeah. through here <laughs> i'm early how about the rubber compounds you look at the just the nomenclature the names of the p0 tires you see that in in the road tires you see that on the f1 tires the chinterato here's marley yeah. the cat passing through <laughs> here at the 7744 oh. ranch outside austin he's interested in the in the topics we are talking evidently about. Yeah. evidently uh is there any, beyond the names, is there any similarities in the rubber compounds of an F1 tire and a road or a gravel cycling tire? There is, uh, I mean, without disclosing too much about the Formula 1, but the fact that we have uh, access to the same people and the same materials, in rubber compound, this means uh, uh, polymers. Mm -hmm. So, generally speaking, the Formula 1 rubber formulation is a more complex, so it has a lot many more materials, many more different chemicals, but some of them, they are uh, regularly used in cycling tires as well. Mm -hmm. So we have the advantage by doing tires which are really lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Beat it, cat. We can use, uh, we can use uh, materials and in chemical form of polymers, which are uh, pretty advanced and expensive from one side because they are used in motorsports in general, maybe not only in, uh, in Formula 1. Mm -hmm. uh, and in cycling tires, we use a very low amount because the tire itself is, is very lightweight. Uh, so there is no implication in terms of production cost uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So we are free to use whatever latest advanced polymers that has been uh, in our uh, portfolio, uh, mm -hmm. which is usually the ones that is used in Formula also in cycling tires. Let's talk gravel tire trends. Wider seems to be a thing for a while. The, like 40 mil was seemingly the common gravel tire size. Now we're seeing racers go 45, 50, 2.1, 2. Yeah. 2.2. Mountain bike diet. Yeah. What, what are you seeing at Pirelli as far as what is selling? What's like, what's the hottest width right now? And where do you see that going? Yeah, well, I, if, we, if you ask me also uh, what we see at Pirelli, I have to divide uh, the answer in two, because one is uh, what we see is being sold right now, and what's the trend uh, in the sales figures, which is going towards uh, wider uh, sections. So we started uh, in 2019 uh, where the 35 was the best seller. Mm -hmm. Now it's barely sold. Uh, and so that the best seller is moving from 35 to 40 and we expect to become 45. Uh, this is related to me. There are two aspects which are driving the sales in that direction. One is very simple and is the tire clearance on the frames. Sure. So bicycle manufacturers, they are realizing that wider tires, they, are, they have uh, more benefits for the average consumer, regardless if it's a racer or an adventurer or whatever. So they are allowing bigger bigger tires to fit in their frames. Mm -hmm. And so the consumer starts to follow, not necessarily because they are aware of the benefits, but they get a bike which comes uh, with bigger tires already. So they experience that, they get used to it, and they realize that the, the 40 is the one that their bikes came from. Mm -hmm. So eventually they look for 45 when they replace it. And that's a more or let's say a commercial trend which is happening. Then there is the racing side of things or even the adventure because there are athletes that are pushing the boundaries uh, in doing multiple day races. And both of them, the, let's say more uh, UCI gravel or even at the unbounded kind of, of races, 
the level of fitness is increasing, the level of, of competition is increasing. So things like aerodynamic rolling resistance and generally higher speeds on rough terrain mm -hmm. are becoming a normality, normal. And so I would say that because the average speed is comparable to one of the road, so we are, we are talking 35, 40, even 45 kilometers per hour on a gravel bike, which is not comparable to mountain bikes, because a mountain bikes, even at World Cup level, you have uh, 20 kilometers per hour average speed on a race. Mm. While gravel racing is closer in terms of speed to road racing. And so this is why aerodynamics are starting to become important because at 40k an hour, they make a difference. And at that speed, if you hit uh, small bumps or not so small bumps, you need uh, a suspension that absorbs that. Mm -hmm. And when I say suspension system, I'm not related to forks, but in this case, uh, tires. So the tire volume is the first and the biggest suspension system that you have uh, with yourself. Mountain bike can use uh, suspensions, so the proper uh, fork and, uh, and, and rear suspension, because that impacts the aerodynamics of the bikes. Mm -hmm. But at the speed of mountain bike, this is not an issue. At the speed of road, asking uh, to win uh, a race uh, at 40k an hour with a fork which is, uh, uh, which is consuming you 20 watts, of aerodynamics, mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's not really uh, a good uh, a good choice. So you have to rely only on tires. That's that's the, the baseline of what uh, I want to say. You have to rely only on tires to get uh, the grip, the comfort, and the roll resistance. Mm -hmm. So this is the other side of the uh, the trend of getting as big as possible. And this is why in racing you see sizes to go up to 50, 55, and even proper mountain bike tires, mm -hmm. depending on the course. Mm -hmm. now the Cinturato H, which we rode today, that comes in 35 to 50. To 50, up right to 50. Now. Yeah, yeah I have a, to say, 45. and this is something we are proud of, that we, we presented and defined the range up to 50 already four years ago. Mm -hmm. That's more or less the we, we worked on the, uh, this gravel range on 2019, and uh, we were seeing already the 50 coming mm -hmm. because of the, basically because of the reason that I'm, we are talking about. Uh, Last thing we want to talk about construction, or have you talk about construction uh, in, in two categories. One, the rubber compounds, and then the casing. So how different is a high-end tire, and Pirelli makes predominantly high-end tires. Yeah. But you've worked in Vittoria, you've been in the bikes for a long time, you, you understand rubber very yeah. well. How different is a high-end rubber compound from an entry-level tire or rubber compound? It's, and what's different? It's complex to achieve, but very simple in principle. In the rubber industry in general, and then now I'm talking not necessarily only tires, but the rubber in general, so even if we talk about the soles of your shoes, I mean, whatever it is, the rubber, it's pretty easy to get uh, one feature very good yes. compromising on the others yes like if you want good grip great but it yeah. might it's come easy, apart very quickly achieve either from a manufacturer standpoint and from a know-how standpoint mm -hmm. or if you want durability you can make something that's never going to exactly. flat but it's going to feel like garbage exactly so yeah. the real complexity and the hard challenge is to get uh, many features as good as you can at the same time mm -hmm. so that's the real uh, difficult part mm -hmm. uh, so and that's the, the difference between a, a high-end tires and a low-end tires. It's not the single feature. So if you want mm -hmm. a tire which is uh, super durable, probably a cheap tire it is mm -hmm. more durable than a high-end. Mm -hmm. But then the other features like uh, puncture, comfort, uh, wet grip, and speed, uh, they Rolling are really crap. Yeah. They're not right. existing. Right. While on a high-end tires, even though still uh, any brand decides that one uh, feature is prioritized over the others, mm -hmm. but then the other ones, which are not pri prioritized, they are still really good. Mm -hmm. And being able eventually to have uh, two, which are the best you can do against competitors, and the others still good, it's where uh, you can define yourself, separate yourself uh, against your competitors in, in the high-end uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of effort and you can achieve that to go to the second point. You can achieve that uh, in cycling tires, working on both uh, the rubber compound and the casings. 
Mm -hmm. There is the interaction between the two parts. Mm -hmm. It's really, really deep. Okay, okay. Let's, let's talk about the rubber a little bit first, and then you can talk about, uh, ask about the casing. So how do you manipulate rubber to achieve those different things? Is it, are there different types of rubber trees in the world, or is it you're adding different elements into the compound? Like, it's how, the different, how do you achieve this? It's the different chemicals. Uh -huh. uh, so it's uh, either the availability of uh, advanced polymers, mm -hmm. because now the polymer industry is developing new polymers. So it's all uh, chemical, uh, it's, it's all materials. I mean, it's all, except of natural rubber, all the other polymers, they are coming from uh, chem chemical laboratories, so they are coming from oil. Mm -hmm. So that area of development uh, is pushing, is inventing new polymers, which mm -hmm. are features, uh, uh, which has more than one features up at the same time. Mm -hmm. So a polymer which has, uh, for example, in the cross links of the polymer itself has a good affinity with uh, water, mm -hmm. as well as a low uh, energy deformation, for example. This is uh, one of the two features that uh, at the single chemical then uh, turns out into the rolling resistance and the wet grip. So the ability of uh, molecules to stick with the water ones is something, it's an area of improvement by the single material itself. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing where we, for example, as Pirelli, we benefit of the whole group. So mm -hmm. the fact that we have uh, our compounders uh, working for uh, Formula One and all the others, they have access to materials and they know how to use them. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to the second part. The second part is uh, the knowledge and the know-how of how to mix them together. Mm -hmm. And this is very similar to what is happening. I always say, for example, with the food, when you're cooking, you have ingredients, yes. which has to be good by themselves. Yes. And then the way you mix them makes the final dish. Yes. So that's another okay. area where uh, your knowledge as a chef mm -hmm. makes a lot of difference as well. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, you can have a decent dish with uh, bad ingredients if you are a very good chef. <laughs> You can have maybe a good dish if you don't know how to cook it, but it, it's simple if the ingredients they are really good. Yes. If you are crap or crap in both, <laughs> it's not gonna work. If you are the best, if you have the best ingredients and you are a, a very good chef, the probably the dish is going to be amazing. Okay. Yeah. That's an easy. I like that. That's example. a. I like that. That's a good analogy. I like it. All right, Chef Samuel, tell tell me about the ingredients that go into a casing of a high end tire, and how does that affect what riders can feel the high into a, an entry level tire. Yeah, so the other part is the, is the casing, which uh, in reality also has a lot of rubber because mm -hmm. the casing is a, is a textile mm -hmm. based off uh, nylon for the large majority of the manufacturer or cotton could be another uh, option. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you have to start to evaluate uh, the properties of the fiber itself. So if the nylon is more or less flexible, if the nylon is more or less uh, strong uh, in, uh, in, in tear resistance or against the cuts, I mean, all those properties of the textile alone. Mm -hmm. And then you have to work on the rubber that you, uh, you put on it. Sure. Which generally is a different rubber than the thread compound because of course uh, it's not going to be in touch with the ground. So it has to have uh, other features like the impermeability of air. So it has to be uh, mm -hmm. airtight. It has to be stronger against the cut, so it has to work together with the, the textile. So the combination of the two is again something which you work from a chemical standpoint and from a pure uh, uh, textile material development. Mm -hmm. So you, you work to make an nylon which is lighter and stronger. So again, you always have to combine uh, two opposite features. So you mm -hmm. need a lighter weight with more flexibility and a better uh, resistance to, to cuts mm -hmm. so that you get uh, the provide. But I would say flexibility is the things that you always want to achieve, mm -hmm. especially in casing, because mm -hmm. that provides you grip and comfort and running resistance. Mm -hmm. All the three together depends on how flexible is the casing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so having those and having some strength, that's part of the secret sauce. Yeah, exactly. Against because they are opposite. Right. But it's lightweight. Usually, is not strong. Right. And cotton is an, as a good example. Cotton is great in flexibility. Yes. But it gives up uh, a lot in terms of strength. Yes. Yeah. So, I love it. Like we were talking in the car. I love how cotton tires feel. Yeah. But they can tear 
especially and on the that, that is the pretty, nature pretty of easy. the material. Yeah. So then is a brand choice how you you design the whole mix yes. together so that the final compromise is uh, is more in favor of the flexibility and the feeling. Yes or in favor of other features. Yes. This depends on also on uh, your know-how as a brand. Sure. We are super good in, in the rubber formulation. Sure. Other brand, the cotton, we know who's making cotton tires is, is very good on that. So it makes a lot of sense that they they go full gas on the things that they know the best. Sure. Each of us do that. Sure. sure. I've, I'm a fan of the website bicyclerollingresistance.com. I realized that Lab tests are exactly that. It's lab tests is not necessarily an outdoor test, but it's nice to have comparative data. And I like the fact that they have both rolling resistance and, and some puncture testing, both in the sidewall and the tread. And that's that's a site that I use sometimes as reference, just to kind of like gut check. Like I'll ride something and feel it, and be like, oh, I wonder how that compares. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I put the Chincherado H in along with a tire that I really love, a gravel tire. I love the Chihuahua G1 RS which feels super good to me because it's yeah. so flexible. It's not the most durable. It's, it's, it's pretty durable, like for a race tire. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Vittoria Terreno Dry, all in like 40 mil. And yeah. The Terreno Dry is like a kind of beefier tire, rolls decently well. And, and this, according to bicycle rolling resistance at least, was sort of like the Goldilocks of like, it's not quite as fast as the RS, but it's quite quick in terms of low rolling resistance, um, but has better puncture protection. Yeah, um, and it's considerably faster than the the Terreno Dry. It is. Uh, does that? So that's that's a very long long no. question. Of like, <laughs> it was a target. I can give you the short answer. It was a target. Yeah. So we, uh, especially because that came at the beginning of the gravel for us and, and in general. So it was a choice uh, that we made to try to have uh, different features to be pretty good, all of them, without one picking over, mm -hmm. over the others. Mm -hmm. So we worked on the mix of uh, the casing construction, the layers to protect against the catch and the behavior of the rubber itself formulation mm -hmm. to provide. Also, one thing which is generally really good uh, on our rubber compound and gravel is the wet grip, given mm -hmm. that the rolling resistance is pretty good. Mm -hmm. The wet grip is, uh, is, uh, is even better mm -hmm. in comparison mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we wanted to have the, all the properties to be. Mm -hmm. Even though this is a tire clearly for, for dry, for half pack. Yes. If you have a wet hard pack, the wet grip of this is, is really, really above average. Yes. And that was been, has been done by, by purpose. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And, and just like as a tire manufacturer, you have to choose what your ingredient lists are and what your target goal is. Riders are the same. Like as, as much as we'd all like to have 20 different bikes with all sorts of different tires, <laughs> mostly we'll pick a <laughs> set of tires that works for what we do most of the time. But then, yeah, sometimes you get caught out in the rain and you don't want yeah. to have a tire that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like sliding around on ice. That makes sense. One last question for you, sir. What does the future hold in terms of gravel tires? You know, we've got the Pirelli recently came out with the P0 race, not a gravel tire, but a gravel width. In a 40. road race tire, 40 millimeter tire. Yeah, that's a tricky question. I mean, uh, what can you I, reveal? I know you're working no, at right. least a year, a couple years. Time wise, let me give you a another perspective in terms of uh, reply. Okay. We as a component manufacturers, uh, we are looking a lot of what uh, the discipline is uh, becoming itself. And in that sense, uh, we believe, I believe uh, personally that the gravel is still uh, not in a mature phase. So what gravel is, is still very diverse. Mm -hmm. If you ask uh, different group age or different geographical uh, sure things so it's already really really wide it's not defined yet as uh, road racing is very well defined the road endurance is very well defined yes. even mountain bikes even if it's really complex but each of the disciplines is really well defined mm -hmm. what the typology of the discipline is and this leads to bike brands and component brands to design the uh, technical capability of the bicycle very clearly Mm -hmm. So to be good at this, 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 and this, because the discipline itself, the way the bike is being used, uh, is established. Yes. So you can design uh, the technical vehicle, which is the bicycle, with precise uh, targets, and so the components can do the same. In gravel, we are not there yet. Yeah, it's still the Wild West. I so think that's we still so have to approach so to cover. the tires, and so I expect the other components around, keeping the 
capabilities as wide as possible mm -hmm. so that uh, whatever it is you're waiting to gravel we can please the consumers mm -hmm. we can have them having a good experience mm -hmm. so we are not mature yet as a discipline we think to go uh, gravel racing aero tires, for example, where mm -hmm. we know that two things, uh, aero and rolling, they have to be super quick and we can compromise on others. Then maybe there will be endurance gravel, there will be multiple days of gravel. So with each of the categories very well defined, mm -hmm. then we can start to design tires specifically made for those. That will make uh, our job easier, in, in a sense, and even the choice of the consumer. Given that, uh, again, if we're talking high hand, uh, even, even if I prioritize one feature, the others, they have to be good. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are not in that situation yet. Mm -hmm. So we see, uh, so to give you the answer where gravel is going, I don't know. I ask you what's where. coming from, from Pirelli and you're giving me a very long answer the same. You can't, you can't tell us what's coming yet. Yeah, we, we cannot tell you, but <laughs> we see clearly that uh, there is a definition of uh, macro typology coming. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the 40 millimeter P0 is an answer to that. So we mm -hmm. see gravel racing. If you look at the gravel world championship that has, has been happen, it's it's been uh, gravel enough to use a gravel bike, mm -hmm. and uh, but with uh, bikes which has to be fast at uh, 40 km per hour, mm -hmm. being pushed by the likes of Van der Poel. Was anyone using the that road tire that P0 race? In our case, in our, case, in our case, not yet. Yeah, and I say not yet. <laughs> Uh, but we have seen from other brands that have uh, big slick tires available, they have been used already yeah. by uh, very few riders, but they have been there. Sure. And if we look at what happened usually in the racing field within athletes, there is always first year where there are only a couple of guys which start to use it. Then the year after they become uh, 12, 20. Then if one of them starts to perform well, then everybody, starts everybody wants that. Everybody. Sure. It happens yeah. with the 29er tires of mountain bike. Sure. The beginning it was uh, sure. very few guys. Then uh, someone started to win, and then in, in one year everybody was in 29er. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it might go the same way with the gravel tires. Yeah, it's funny that professional athletes are susceptible to that same sort of phenomenon that yeah, affects but even amateurs, consumers. If they are racing amateurs, they are, they yeah. go the same. Sure. Yeah, even sure. They just go slower, but the mentality <laughs> is the same. Guaranteed. Yeah. All right. Thanks okay. very much, Emily. You're welcome. Thanks to you. So that's it for me from Coda in Austin, Texas. Thanks for watching. Whether you're on four wheels or two, I hope you can get out there and enjoy the ride.